Hi, my name is Veronica Nadal. I am a registered nurse. I work in the NICU, which is the neonatal intensive care unit. I've been a nurse for 12 years. Can you explain to me what prenatal drug and alcohol abuse is? So, um, when a woman is pregnant, if she uses any kind of drugs or alcohol, um, the baby becomes dependent on it. It also depends on how much the mother's using. And so when the baby's born, um, they're no longer getting the drug or alcohol from their mom, so they start to have withdrawal symptoms after birth. How common is it to, for you to deal with uh, these babies? You know, sometimes we we have a, like one or two, sometimes we have more, it just kind of depends. But um, we get them a lot, especially when their symptoms are really bad, uh, and they send them to us, and then they keep. What are some of the symptoms that these babies show? Um, so the babies, when they start to withdraw from the drugs, they become very irritable, and they have like this really high-pitched screaming cry. Um, it's really loud. Not like just your average baby cry, it's really loud. Um, they get like really sweaty and because they're like in pain. They have really tight tones, so their muscles are really like tight. Um, they, they can have a lot of vomiting and diarrhea. They can feed really poorly. And sometimes they, have, they have, um, can have seizures and they like have little tremors and they shake. So they're just kind of very just in pain and uncomfortable. How severe would you say um, is it to risk abusing drugs and or alcohol while pregnant? It's never a good idea to use any kind of drugs or alcohol when you're pregnant uh, because it affects the baby, it affects the growth. The best thing is to stay sober and to not do anything and as soon as you, know, you find out you're pregnant to quit doing any kind of drug, alcohol, smoking or anything. What are some ways to help the baby that suffered from this? So when we get the babies, um, they're usually um, really fussy and irritable, so what we do is um, we'll give them warm baths, we'll give them massages to kind of help with their like tight tone. Um, we have to hold them a lot, we hold them more than uh, the other babies that we have. But we hold them and we'll swaddle them really tight, give them baths and massages. And, uh, and if it's really severe, we will um, give them medicine to kind of get them back because they were getting this drug constantly and if the, the symptoms are really bad, we'll start to give them um, some drugs to help them feel better and then we wean them off slowly. Or if they're having seizures, because some babies have seizures, we'll give them meds for the seizures too so they don't have those. Basically, we just want to keep them comfortable. Well, alcohol is a uh, nervous system depressant which means that the fetus brain will fail to develop properly during fetal growth and the child will be born with what is called fetal alcohol syndrome which is mostly uh, uh, manifested by brain retardation, intellectual retardation, mental retardation, slow uh, cognitive development. Uh, on top of that, the alcohol will have an effect on the face of the baby we, it will develop a very flat face with very narrow eyes and a broad nose bridge, which is very characteristic of a child who suffers from alcohol fetal syndrome. But again, the main thing is this mental retardation, which is irreversible, and the child will become a slightly too severely retarded, mentally retarded adult. Uh, whether it's severe or moderate depends on the level of drinking of the mother during pregnancy with heavier drinking resulting in uh, more severe mental retardation. So the best way is really prevention to uh, instruct the mothers and motivate the mothers to not drink or if they do extremely little during their pregnancy. Anywhere from a minimum of three drinks to five drinks or more per day on many days during the pregnancy, that very high level of consumption might probably be fe uh, fatal to the fetus. Uh, and how does this affect their future lives? But again, as I said, uh, the child is mentally retarded and also physically retarded for life. Those prog uh, problems are irreversible, unfortunately. What was it like when you brought the baby home and how old was he? Um, he was two weeks old. Um, at first, it was had a new adoption. Um, he cried a lot, um, which is something 
new to us as a family um, but in whole it was a total new experience that we had to endure what side effects was he born with um, he had body jitters um, he had muscle tightness his legs were tight his arms were tight um, he had a very high pitch cry um, he wouldn't sleep well at night we had to swaddle him in order for him to sleep um, he would wake up probably like your every two every hour or two hours <laughs> at night um, and then it was pretty hard when he was still baby really baby because he started uh, with acid reflux and he was spitting up a lot so that was something um, he still has um, the acid reflux that he has to take medication for um, and he just has anxiety where he um, pretty much like he'll scratch his face a lot um, his hands it's more of like he has to tug at himself sometimes like he'll he'll hit his belly if he's mad um, another side effect that he has is that um, he can't be alone uh, for example like if I'm driving in the car there has to be somebody in the back seat with him um, if he has to of course go alone where there's times where I have to drive alone he'll just cry the whole time because he has to see someone sitting next to him and um, still to this day he doesn't sleep at night um, he's almost gonna be six months and he wakes up about every two hours still um, and it's more of just he has to be swaddled still <laughs> um, but other than that it's getting better <laughs> How different was he from your biological children? Um, he was very different because he had to be nurtured more. Um, he had to be more. Um, he had to be more careful with him because of the tightness in his muscles. Um, it wasn't as easy as addressing him because of the fact that you had to be careful. Um, the way you hold his arm, the way you hold his legs, the way even just to change his pamper. Um, but. Um, of course, having uh, the experience of going to the doctors a lot and medication, of course, the acid reflex, or you had to get special bottles, um, just a special doctor's office that you have to go to just to make sure that he's um, physically and mentally okay. Um, that was a major difference. Special things that I have to do for him is I have to like ease. Him, make, like, make him know he's safe, um, sing to him. Of course, he has to have special bottles for his um, tummy. Um, he still has to be swaddled. He has to see a lot of specialists just to make sure um, physical therapy for his arms and legs. Mm -hmm.